Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that let this moment be your moment of presence, that you speak to each one of us through the how to the mouth of this mama. Lord, let all the co-host and all the participants and everyone be attentive, and we pray that each one will participate and ask questions to believe and not ask questions not to believe. So Father, we bring this mama before you. We thank you that you have anointed her and we thank you that as she's going to share, let us share those things that will be beneficial to each one of us. Father, take complete control over her and everything that she speaks brings glory to you and to you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, to Amen. you all, you co host. Amen. Come Amen. on, it's Praise your turn now. Praise God. Good morning, brother. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kimberly, and uh, I'm from Dubai. I mean, I stay in Dubai, I'm from India. Um, with my family, I'm staying here, and I have a four and a half year old son. I was introduced to the ministry uh, by my friend. We were actually working together, Sister Merlin, um, and she introduced me to the videos and the teachings, and I started watching them. And um, you know, my, uh, I mean, not watching them every time, but now and then I used to watch. One or one or two videos because it was very interesting the way the teaching was done and the Bible studies were done and all that. So um, the testimony is about my son and how God's glory is just amazing, as always. Um, my son will be five in August, uh, end of August. His name is Elijah, and uh, he is he is a blessing from God. Um, so the the, the issue. Uh, started, uh, you know, sometime last year when he was uh, when he was three. We admitted him in school. We admitted him in nursery uh, at the end of 2019. Um, he loved going to school. He was doing well. He was thriving in school. And uh, after two months, we 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 had the COVID situation, so they just completely switched to uh, online learning, and that's when we started noticing so many different things. Like um, uh, we were not able as parents to sit with him and to teach him because we were working full time um, and the kid was getting maybe half an hour of even that of e-learning a day and he was not having any social interaction um, and also his uh, talking was a bit uh, delayed. Um, you know, he would, he would still talk in baby talk. So we were concerned and we just kept, you know, saying like, okay, fine, you know, he's growing up and you know, every every kid de develops at a different different way, and um, then he, uh, so last year, twenty twenty, he did his online online learning. He was he he just wasn't interested in in learn in sitting in front of the laptop and doing his learning. So so to make him sit down for that half an hour was was really difficult. Um, you know, he just doesn't want to do it. But he learned, he picks up things very fast. He picks up things very fast. He just needs to hear something once and he picks up a song or anything like that. He's, he's very fast in grasping, grasping things, but he doesn't want to sit down and listen or he would just say no. Um, so that was a struggle for us. And then eating, uh, you know, meal times with him was just, we just dreaded it because every single time to take a spoon of food we have to nudge him Elijah eat your food you know eat the next mouth the next one he would just eat and then he would just leave it and or he would just keep the food at the side of his mouth and you know he it would just take an hour or two hours to finish the finish his meal he just did not want to listen and did not want to you know um, follow whatever we were telling him so this went on for the whole of last year. And then we thought, okay, maybe if we put him in school, it's going, if he goes to school full time, things are going to change. So he started uh, going to school full time at the beginning of this year. And uh, after a month, uh, we got a call from the school saying, 
uh, you know, we think your kid is not yet ready for school. He's having a lot of issues in school. He's having a lot of, you know, multiple toilet accidents in a day. Um, he spends more time in the toilet than he does in his classroom. Um, he does not communicate his needs. He is not uh, expressive. He does not say when he wants things. Uh, you know, he's uh, so many, so many different uh, complaints like uh, not eating on his own. Okay, so the main thing was like not being independent and not opening his lunchbox on his own, not opening his lunch bag on his own. Uh, you know, not doesn't know how to write his his letters. He knows the alphabets, but he doesn't know how to write anything. So this, uh, they called us into the school and they spoke to us and they gave us a plan and they told us, this is the plan that we are going to incorporate at school and you have to also support it at home. So just to help him to learn and help him to do things on his own. And we tried the plan for a month and it did not, there was very, very little progress. They told us the progress is very slow and, and, uh, um, you know, maybe we need to, to have another meeting. So we had another meeting at the end of, uh, sorry, big, uh, middle of March somewhere. We had another meeting with the teacher, with the head of his primary and with, with, the, with the counselor of the school. And they told us, you know, he's a clever child, but he's not learning. He's not complying. He's not independent. And so many things, like I said, all those issues were still there. Um, not able to, you know, express when he wants to go to the washroom. And and at home also, we were noticing that, you know, he was toilet trained, but then suddenly he just stopped in the middle. He would just go anywhere he wants. And we were surprised because he was four and wondering what is happening. Maybe he's taking time to adjust to the school. or I, we, we didn't understand what was going on, but it was very upsetting to hear these things. Um, so when we had the second meeting, they said the progress is not there, and uh, you have to you have to see a child uh, psych uh, sorry uh, sorry an educational psychologist. So we agreed, and uh, we we booked an appointment. Uh, and for our insurance here in Dubai, um, we have to first see a psychiatrist, child psychiatrist, and then unless the, the psychiatrist gives a referral, then we can go ahead with the psychologist sessions. So we went to see the psycho psychiatrist, uh, a well-reputed psychiatrist. And uh, before that, you know, I just want to say that um, I, I, have, I accepted the Lord um, like wholeheartedly, not, but not by being forced or anything like that. But I accepted the Lord in 2013 when Jesus, I seen Jesus and he, uh, he touched my heart and he showed me love beyond my understanding. Um, and, I would never forget how he came into my life and he, he showed me his love at a time when I never deserved it. Um, he changed my life and he healed me that day um, back in 2013. So I know the love of God. Um, but after that, when I got healed and he turned my life completely around, um, he, uh, you know, I did not have the right uh, guidance. So I, I did not know how to pursue it. Like I was struggling and trying to pursue God, but I did not know how I didn't, I, I kept looking to see, okay, uh, maybe I should, I, I was trying to look for that experience of, you know, being in God's presence. That was what my knowledge of, of being a Christian was. I did not know um, what it means to be a born again Christian. I did not know what it means to talk in tongues, nothing. I did not know it. Um, and so it just went on like that. And, you know, uh, but for the last couple of years, um, uh, I, I the, the, the one thing that I knew was God can do miracles and God can heal. And yeah. I knew that so that was my hope. Um, but, but how, what I need to do, I did not know. So I just told my husband, I said, okay, we're going to the psychiatrist, fine. Um, and, uh, you know, we just need to be careful what she says. Uh, we have to not say anything negative over my son, no matter what. So my husband was, was not was not very strong in faith as well. But um, but anyway, we went to the psychiatrist and uh, they did the evaluation and she said, oh, he's got uh, he's he's clever, but he's got uh, ADHD, and that just uh, like pulled the rug out under our feet. So then that day was was a, was a bad day. My husband was just 
like saying why is god doing this to us and you know just so upset and i said no and i was also crying and i said no this is not god's work i know god i know him he would never do this to us you know he he's not the god that would put things on earth he's a god who died for us and he just did not want to hear it at all he did not want to hear any of it so anyway i said listen i don't care what you think but you know this is not the diagnosis for my son i will not accept it i rebuke it in jesus name i don't care i rebuke it and uh, i said no this is not my son's diagnosis and she also said uh, something interesting she said uh, my son uh, does not you know he doesn't show compassion and uh, you know you uh, kids like this they will not uh, know what it means what uh, she said i'm um, sorry um you know he will he will not have a sense of danger you know he doesn't sense danger and no compassion and i said no this is not what my god has given me no i will not accept it and uh, i know what i prayed for when i prayed for a son and this is not what i prayed for so i said father i don't understand what's going on and i just leave it to you please help me help me that's all i can ask so anyway that was in uh, beginning of april this started and then we went for for the, the the psychologist evaluation started and we had four evaluations and by the end of the evaluation they said no he does not have adhd um he's uh, he just has uh, compliance issues and you know he has a compliance issue of a two year old meaning he doesn't want to listen he doesn't want he cannot he's not listening to instructions he is not uh, communicating his needs he is not expressing his needs and he and uh, the same thing what the school was saying so we said okay fine they are yet to give us the report the psychologist is yet to give us the report and that day the last observation was when they told us this and that was the day i just remembered uh, you know watching the i mean i just remembered the jci uh, lm videos and i thought okay let me just go on the vid- one of the videos and have a look so i went on one of the vi- i was just searching on youtube you know jclm um, testimonies of healing for children and i just happened to come upon one video where there was a mom who was giving a testimony of her son um, and how he was progressing and then i looked into the description and i seen brother amal's uh, number over there and i said i'm i i said let me, you know i have nothing to lose let me just message this brother amal um and that was the 6th of june so i messaged brother and then he got back to me uh and on that day before i uh, but that day while i was crying before i could talk to brother amal i said father you know what uh just help me just show me a way please because i cannot do this on my own but i know that there is a way through this and you're going to take me through this i'm not giving up i cannot give up because i have there is nothing i can do because i've tried everything i've tried disciplining him i've tried sitting with him i've tried spending time nothing is working nothing has worked we've tried everything i cannot do it on my own and now you need to take over and when i and i contacted brother amal and then brother amal spoke to me and he first you know he first dealt with my heart and he told me i had to let go of my past i had to let go of my hurt i had to start praying for people who are who had hurt me and all that and that time when i started doing that the love that i felt that when jesus you know came into my room and and set me free that love came back into my heart and i knew something had changed you know some that was what i was looking for that was what i was pursuing um, to be dwelling in god's presence and that came back to my heart and that just shifted something in me so i said okay brother you know just let me, and he took the time to explain to me uh, the scriptures that i have to read and i have to meditate upon and i have to say every day for my son and he spoke he told me about isaiah 54 to 5 and uh, he also told me uh, the other one which is elijah has the mind of christ uh, he is the righteousness of god and has the wisdom of god the other scripture is luke 252 as Elijah is growing in physical stature he is increasing in knowledge accordingly that is a very interesting one because um you know my son sometimes used to act like a younger kid uh, and we were like why is he acting like immature sometimes so anyway i prayed with brother amal and uh, i felt such a change i felt uh, you know something something just changed in my heart 
And then I eat the next day again, Brother Amma. And then that day I told Jesus, I said, Father, you took, you had five loaves and two fishes, I said, and you fed a multitude. And I'm giving you three months, I said, of my son, because school starts in September. So you take these three months, Father, because you can do, you can do more than I can dare to ask or think. I said, you can do abundantly more than I can ask or think. So here you go, just take over. I said, I cannot do it. Um, and then I started speaking the scriptures and I work full time from home. Uh, my work is, it's, it's quite hectic, you know, a lot of uh, meetings and a lot of things to do. So I was wondering, how am I going to do this? But I don't need to do anything. Holy Spirit showed me I don't need to do anything. He's already done it. So I said, okay, I'm just leaving this burden to you. So every uh, time, I, so I stuck the scriptures on front of my laptop on top of my laptop and I, on the side of my walls, I stuck some scriptures there and I put my son's name in it and I just keep saying that, you know, every day. And uh, the one scripture that I had before I spoke to Brother Amal was Isaiah 54, 13, uh, where it says, uh, you know, my children are taught by the Lord and great shall be their peace. So that was interesting. And I, and I put Elijah's name there and I said, Elijah is taught by the Lord and great shall be his peace. And I wanted to know what that peace means. Because, so I went and Googled and I, and I Googled what is peace according to the Bible? And it said, uh, peace is totality, he, uh, wholeness, harmony, success, uh, completion, um, you know, shalom, complete, it's a completion. So that I wanted for my son. And I kept saying that before I spoke to Brother Amal, but I didn't have the peace in my heart, first of all. And I needed to have that peace first. So, and the other scriptures I was saying was Psalm 127.3, when, you know, children are a gift uh, from God. And uh, in the, and together with James 1.17, I would say, God only gives good gifts. All good gifts come from the Heavenly Father. So my son is a good gift, you know, there's, he's perfect. And, um, and then when I started saying the Lord has given Elijah the tongue of a teacher, I kept saying that, I kept saying that first day, no change, second day, no change, third day, no change. Um, and I knew uh, there was an upcoming meeting with the teacher yesterday with his class teacher, the same teacher who told me in April, you know, uh, it's very difficult to teach your son. He doesn't want to listen. He doesn't want to, uh, you know, come and ask me if he needs a pencil. He doesn't open his bag. He doesn't open his lunchbox. He doesn't do that. He just doesn't, 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 doesn't. So I kept praying and I said, Father, you know what? That meeting is going to be a good meeting. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what it looks like. The teacher is going to mention the words improvement and progress, Father God. And I started speaking in tongues and speaking over it and I spoke those words that, Father, yes, you know, with me, it's impossible, but with you, ever anything is, is possible. So, and after that, the devil did not, oh, the torment and the fear that started coming in, uh, it was, it was terrible. Um, after three, four days, you know, things started happening, like negative things started happening now, like, uh, you know, I'm asking my son something and he's not answering me. And then he's not answering my husband and my husband is, getting frustrated with me and with him and he's getting angry and I don't know how to react and then I'm reacting badly you know retaliating and then uh, uh, I did not know what's happening I'm like father I'm praying but then again the Holy Spirit would say you know just keep keep at it keep at it so I kept speaking the spirit of the Lord is upon my husband the spirit of the Lord is upon my son upon myself um, and then there would be some sort of peace and then uh, there was one particular day where the, uh, I think the fourth or fifth day where I woke up at like, I could not sleep first of all in the night. And then I woke up around five o'clock in the morning because there were so many thoughts, negative thoughts coming to my head. Like, you know, something's wrong. Something is wrong with your kid. Something is not going to be uh, giving me negative visions of him. Oh, he's not going to be, the, uh, you know all the rest, something, the report is going to be wrong or, you know, I mean, the report is going to be negative or the teachers are going to give you a bad report or, uh, you know, what's going to happen? What's going to happen when he grows up? What's going to happen? What are you going to do? Like, and I kept thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And the fear was just increasing and increasing and increasing to such a point I could not focus on my work and I started 
you know imagining those things and i i'm trying to fight it off and say, and say no get away get away get away you know like trying to ignore it did not i did not know um, that i have to fight back i did not know and then i just uh, it was just too much then i just um that time i asked holy spirit i said please holy spirit help me because i did not feel like praying at all when the fear was so much i said holy spirit please just help me you know i started crying and asking holy spirit to help me and then after a few, and i said i just leave it to you after a few like maybe half an hour then brother amal sent us sent some forwards of um he sent some forwards of some videos and one of the video was on prayer and in that uh, i i don't remember the sister's name but she was talking about prayer and she said that you have to fight negative thoughts with the word of god you cannot just keep quiet and then i said okay and so i started doing that so the negative thoughts were still there so i started fighting back i said no but the lord has given elijah the tongue of a teacher no but the lord has given elijah the mind of christ elijah is growing in physical stature as he is increasing and he is increasing in knowledge accordingly i said my god has made elijah not you my god has put promises in him not you you know i am going to give a testimony of my son and i am going to give a testimony of my son and i kept saying that and i kept saying that and and then when god says you know resist the devil and he will flee he has to he has no other choice and he just it the fear just flew that day and then i said father you have to show me something i said i need to start seeing things i said and i am going to start seeing things so i started imagining um my son listening to his teacher listening to instructions answering things doing things i started imagining it and then one of the messages that you had spoken brother uh johnson you were saying about how you know jacob had looked at this the speckled uh, rods and he was imagining he had yeah. positive imaginations i said yeah i'm going to do that for my son so i made a list i made a list of what i want to see in my son and i said and uh, you know uh, the list is like he has excellent reasoning my son has excellent reasoning skills my son is eating on his own and finishes all his food my son is obedient to his elders my son is following instructions perfectly he is fully potty trained he is bathing and clothing himself uh, he has no unnecessary stress reactions because he was having stress reactions and you know like getting really stressed out and stuff he has no desire or addiction to devices he he is perfect he is well mannered so so all those things i've written down over here and i and i kept it with me and i said this is my vision for my son you know and as i say each line i visualize what it is going to be like and uh, and and yes again thoughts negative thoughts came but i kept looking i just kept looking at the word and i kept reading that word and speaking that word over him and speaking that word over him and every time he does something like uh, that i don't want him to do i say thank you father that he's doing the right thing you know thank you father he's eating his food you know thank you lord jesus that he is listening to me he is obeying me thank you lord jesus that he is calm and uh, that went on for another day or two and then we started putting him in swimming classes and uh, and and that day the day before the swimming class we had church and then my husband got a vision of my son graduating you know and that was amazing and then my husband comes and tells me uh, you know god has given shown me that i have to to do something for my son i have to take him to swimming classes i have to do uh, you know do some more activities for him and all that so i said okay good you should do that then okay and um, but still when he started the swimming class again negative thoughts came in my mind like he is not going to listen to the instructor he is going to start screaming and crying he is going to start giving trouble your husband is going to get angry it's going to be crazy then i said no because we have a choice to say no you know i said no 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 my son is showing that class he is listening to the instructor he is doing well he is learning he is going to learn and listen and it's going to be an awesome day for him today in the name of jesus christ because my god is teaching him Jesus is with him right now. I cannot be with him but my God is with him. And um my, the the class was going on my husband took my son to the class the swimming class and then I didn't call them but I called them like after uh, uh, half an hour or so and I just called my husband and said hi how is it going you know I just want to know. He's like it's going really well he's listening to all the instructions of the coach. 
And uh, it was amazing to, read, to hear that. I said, wow, that was the first sort of turning point for us. I said, now I've got it. This is, the, this is what I need. You know, just that little, that little thing that, like how, uh, you know, Elijah's, uh, uh, that Buddha boy, he asked him, can you see the clouds? And uh, he said, no, for seven times. On the seventh time, he said, I can see a cloud, a small size of a man's hand. And then he said, that was enough. You know, you go and tell the king that it's going to rain. And that was the turning point for us. So I said, yes, see, he can listen to instructions. He can listen to instructions. And then I started speaking the word more. So when I say the Lord has given Elijah the tongue of a teacher, now I say the Lord has given Elijah the tongue of an excellent teacher that he knows how to sustain the weary with the right words. You know, that's how I keep, I keep imagining and saying it. Then the next night, uh, you know, I said, you know what? We should all sit together and have dinner. And because we were not sitting together and having dinner, because the most of the time we were just one of us were sitting with Elijah and making him eat. So we said, no, we're all going to sit at the table and have dinner. And we're going to pray a little prayer before we eat our food. And uh, so we said a very simple prayer. Thank you, Father, for being here with us as we eat, for sitting with us here and blessing our food. Thank you. Let this meal be a peaceful one in the name of Jesus Christ. And that meal was the most peaceful we have had in years. Elijah finished his food in 30 minutes. Elijah... We only had to tell him like a few times, hey, eat your food, Elijah. And he was eating it. And then every day we do that now with him and he's improved. Like we don't even have to tell him to eat his food. He just automatically eats his food on his own and he's having a wonderful time with us. And uh, the reasoning skills, like the other day, if you ask him any why questions, he, he wouldn't answer the why questions. He'll answer, what is this? If you ask him, what is this? He'll answer everything. He'll, if you ask him, what is that? Or, you know, he answers. You know, the why questions, he would just go blank. But the other day we went, we took him to the mall and we have a pet, you know, we have pet cats at home. So he says, Mama, I want to get take the pet cat and go. And uh, so I said, no, you can't take the pet cat and go. Do you know why? So I was trying to teach him. I said, do you know why? And then I kind of, ex like, you know, because of previous experience, I just kind of, by nature, I just ex expected him not to answer. But he turned around and he told me, yes, you can't take the cat to the mall because she'll run up and down and get lost. And, uh, and then, then the other day, uh, I, I was coughing. And uh, he said, he ran up to me and he says, Mama, you're coughing. Are you okay? Don't worry, Mama. I will help you. He goes, he brings his bottle of water and he comes to me and he gives me his water. And he says, Mama, drink this water, Mama. Okay, don't worry. You're going to be okay. You know, a child who they said could not have compassion, he, he came and gave me water when I was coughing. His dad cut his finger the other day, cutting, you know, he was cutting some vegetables and he cut his finger and he comes up to me and he says, Mommy, please call the ambulance fast, you know, because uh, you have to take dad up to the hospital. And uh, I said, why do you have to take dad up to the hospital? He says, because you have to put a bandage on his finger. He's got, he's got hurt. He's reasoning. And, uh, you know, the other day at, at, at dinner time, I said, hey, Elijah, he told me, Mama, I got scared in the swimming pool i got scared i said okay why did you get scared um, because my foot was not touching the bottom of the pool you know so i got scared so that that word that he cannot sense danger is gone and uh, the compassion thing is gone the understanding thing um, you know cannot take instructions that is gone the understanding thing that is gone and uh, uh, like you know, he, 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 he started. So th the best part was yesterday when we had a meeting with the teacher. Um, again, the fear started coming back to such a point where my heart was just racing. But I said, no, this is just a feeling. This is just my body reacting. But no, God has already done the, de done the deal is done. I'm not going to ask you, Father, let the meeting go well. Let the meeting go well. No, no, no. I've already asked you. If I ask my earthly father once. He's going to do it. If I ask you, you're going to do it way better than he can do it. So I'm not going to ask you. I thank you that it's already done, Father. Thank you, Father. I start imagining that the meeting is going to go well. And then I spoke to the teacher. And uh, she said, um, 
she was so happy. She says, Kimberly, uh, the progress I've seen in your son is outstanding. And uh, she used the words progress and improvement. <laughs> she says, I've seen a big improvement in him. She said, every morning I stand by the gate to welcome the kids. And um, for months, Elijah, for all these months, Elijah walked right past me and he would ignore me. But now he comes to me and he says, good morning, miss. How are you today? You know, I enjoyed my bus ride. Or he would speak to her every single morning now. He acknowledges the teacher. And she says, he has gotten so much of confidence that he stands in front of the class and he speaks. She says, his level of his knowledge in some areas is outstanding. She said, unbelievable. That's the word she used. It's unbelievable. She says, I only have to teach Elijah the song and dance, or if it's a song and dance with lyrics, you know, song lyrics, one time. I don't understand how a child his age can pick up a whole song, the dance routine in one time, when the other kids who are older than him, because he's the youngest in his class, the other kids who are older than him, we have to tell them five to six times. He has a vocabulary that is higher than his age. You know, he knows all the phonics sounds. She says he can write his own name now. A child who couldn't write a letter when he started this year, he's writing his own name. He can spell his name. He's starting to, he's reading, you know, he's, uh, I mean, it's, I can't, I could not have done it. That meeting was amazing. She says, he's expressing himself. He's coming and telling me, miss, I'm sad today. I want to see my mommy and my daddy. Or oh, I'm happy that, you know, we did this in class and we did that in class. And um, she says, there's so much of improvement. And the toilet uh, incidents, it's, come down to like once a week if that happens or there's nothing at all because he's just he's so confident right now so yeah so mama <clears throat> so mama yes brother this started how many days back uh 6th of june so like 11 days in 11 Today days, 11. you got such a big progress. Yeah. Why did not take place all these years? Because I did not have the love of God in my heart. My heart was not correct first. My heart needed so, to be changed. So today what we were speaking in tongues is the power that is working within you is the agape love. Yes. That love of God. It's the fuse for every imagination, yes. every asking that the Holy Spirit will bring it to pass, right? Yes, brother. So, and that agape love, I was hmm. listening to one of your teachings, brother. Hmm. Uh, the, the series that uh, you have on agape love, I just listened to the first one, I'm, uh, hmm. you know, and that gave me, I just listened to it very carefully and that just gave me so much of, uh, you know, uh, knowledge that the other day my husband was so angry and you know he came and he started shouting and saying oh why is it you know uh, he started shouting because we, we went out we did the swimming class with my son we came back home and he just started getting angry for no reason and I mm. could not understand why he's getting angry and he started shouting at my son and shouting at me and and I said and I was almost retaliating and I remember no agape love we have to show even when it's not when it's not uh, you know lovely a lovely situation so mm. i asked holy spirit what am i supposed to do because i'm so upset right now and he said just apologize no say sorry and then i argued with the holy spirit and i said but i didn't do anything wrong you know and he said just let it go i said i'm still supposed to say sorry he didn't answer yes. me and then i said okay I will go and say sorry. I said, I'm very sorry. I'm sorry I upset you. You know, just please forgive me. I will I will try to do better next time. And my husband did not know how to react. And after 10 minutes or so, he, he came and apologized to me. And he said, I, I'm the one who acted out of, you know, out of line. So, you know, thanks. So, thanks so, just so now, now the love is not based on his performance, right? No, it's not. So your response is not going to be based on whether it's good to me or bad to me, your response is going to be one-sided. I will be good to you, right? 
Yes, brother. And you did argue with Holy Spirit. Yes. And Holy Spirit gave taught you a good lesson. Yes. And the lesson was you just go and apologize and see what happens. Now with all that argument, would, would do you think he would have come back to you and said he's sorry? If you had to use your method. No, it would not have worked. It, it would have caused more damage. Yes. So in all these things, the the summary of this thing, what you are talking mm. about, the 10 or 11 days, is all about you learning to discern that what you had learned in the past and mm -hmm. what the scripture says is exactly opposite. Don't you think so? Yes. So now you have to unlearn by force. Nobody had to yes. uh, force you. You had to force yourself and tell yourself, just shut up. I'm ready yes. to submit to God. That's yeah. what you did with the Holy Spirit. You submitted yes. to him and you said, Lord, if that is what you want me to do, I will do it for you. Correct? Yeah. Yes. He, he but when told you did me. it the first time, when you did it the first time, it wouldn't have come mm -hmm. from your heart. Come on. No. No. But when you saw the result, did your eyebrows go up? Oh, yes. Now, now I don't want to take my way at all. <laughs> now you understand that when yes. I discern from the Holy Spirit, okay, mm -hmm. now every moment of battle contains a different, 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 different reward from God. When you discern yes. every situation in your life, doing it God's way. Yes, so for any kind of reward, in any kind of situation that you're going through, might be your son, might be your husband, or might be yourself, is discerning and asking yes. Holy Spirit, can you tell me how should I respond to this? And he yes. will only give you response which Jesus has already taught in the word. He cannot yes. ever give you uh, to respond yes. something that is contradicting to Jesus' teaching. Yes, I absolutely agree. I when you're doing that this last few days because Prada Amal told me, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is with you. And I was, and I knew that in my head. I didn't know that in my heart. You know, I know that in my head, oh yes, we have the Spirit of God who lives inside of us. But in my heart, I did not know that. But when he told me, the Holy Spirit wants to tell you that he's with you. I have a giant on the inside of me and the devil has nothing on me and the devil does not and one thing that the Holy Spirit taught me is when my husband was getting angry and coming and screaming and shouting and I if I had to retaliate in anger that would have just blown up you know but the devil does not know how to respond to love because so he does not because he does yes. not have defense against love God is love yes. so when you exercise agape love you are putting God in front of you. Yes. When you are operating in agape love, you are putting God in front of you. And the very person who came against you, that person is not expecting you to respond that way. Yes. And brother. now, the devil in him, who was causing him, who was instigating him to come against you, he mm -hmm. gets tortured, tormented, because your love seed is so powerful, it blows the devil out. That's why yes. you did the job and you did not even expect from him to come and tell you sorry. It was all about you and the Lord, right? Yes, absolutely. So you are not interested whether my husband is going to say yes or no. You are interested in that I pass the test. Correct. So when it is going to depend on another person's test, passing test, it's going to depend on him. And the best yeah. part about Christian life is you are not depending on him to decide mm. your your victory, it's going to be your action that decides your victory. Yes. Let's say he did not come back. Does that mean you mm -hmm. lost the battle? No. No, because you passed the test and the test was what? Respond That's and ask for sorry even though it was not your fault. Now, when you did that and you discern that in step number one, did you get the reward in, after 10 minutes? Yes. So, in all these days of 11 days, 
there was on one side studying the word and mm-hmm. that's why i asked you have i ever seen you before no have i ever no. spoken to you before no. no today is the first time live i'm talking to you right yes sir yes sir so do you need to call me or do you need to go to the youtube and study tell me honestly i can go to youtube and study so do you need me or do you need the truth i need the truth so what the about the what, what amal did was what amal did was he gave you the inter- introduction and he said please go and do this homework okay mm-hmm. and yes. put it in your system and then just follow this truth right yes. yes so as you began to do it in the beginning you saw no reward four days were gone no reward fifth day got no reward the reward yeah. came from a most unexpected place you were expecting the reward to come from school mm-hmm. but you came you got the reward from the most unexpected place because children who are normal they mm-hmm. not follow instruction in the swimming pool yeah because i myself used to swim 5 kilometers a day so i know children will be so much afraid on the first visit that they will panic and from the most unexpected place you heard not yourself but your husband saying is following the instructions and as you mm-hmm. rightly said you saw a little cloud and he said it's going to rain excellent yes. so every moment you are discerning it from the lens mm-hmm. of the holy spirit from the lens mm-hmm. of the scripture and because you began to discern looking at the lens looking into the mirror of the word of god and responding the way god has said in his word yes moment by moment you started gaining ground and satan who had been giving you imaginations and facts and facts and facts now you began to understand all i have to do is use the same imagination where satan was giving me facts now i have to use the same 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 imagination using the promises of god and as you rightly said when jacob put that spotted rods and he could change the dna the mm. genes of the cattle which were fully covered totally fully covered and they gave young ones to the spotted ones because jacob saw the male mating who was fully colored he started believing and imagining that's not a fully colored male that's a spotted male yes and god is giving us a powerful truth that with my imagination i can sit in one place take the scripture and take that scripture which is giving me godly thoughts and start mixing my faith in agreement to those dead to those godly thoughts it mm-hmm. will change anything in the physical now now looking at five years no your son is yeah he'll be five and yeah he's okay. almost five looking at almost five years as a mother your mind set was you know that god cannot do this to my son yes. you know it and that's right but you don't know the process how mm-hmm. to get what god is love and if yes. you don't know the process you got the software the bible but you don't know mm-hmm. how to use the software will you ever get result no so if you don't get result can you blame god for not doing it or you, you got to blame yourself because you don't know how to use the software yeah it's my fault I so now you are, now you are beginning to understand that when i am studying the agape love or any topic any topic if mm. i can get the system right of that software and discern my situation and mm-hmm. apply what has been taught will that new mentality will that new mentality now become your seed yes i'm i'm repeating again will that new mentality i'm not talking about the old one now what mm. was amal doing giving you a brand new mentality 
sins. And when he gave you that brand new mentality, he gave you a scripture. Now what did you do? You put some addition, adjectives. How, what mm -hmm. kind of a teacher tongue he has got? Mm -hmm. are, you, are, you, are you understanding? Yes, yes, brother. So he gave you a scripture. Yes. You took that scripture and you saw little, little changes. Now you mm -hmm. said, I now understand the system. So let me put as many adjectives I want to yes. that tongue, the teacher's tongue. Yes. Now, what is that new adjectives that you are putting? That new so, adjective that you are putting in your imagination are the uncommon seeds. So when you go to the Amplified Bible, what does the Amplified Bible do? That Amplified Bible is giving you more, more words with more imaginations to imagine. Yes. So when you put the whole package in, now you've got plenty of uncommon seed regarding one word, teacher's tongue. Yeah. So which one would be having more crop? One seed or variety of seeds of a same kind. For example, one mango seed and many, many different mangoes, but all mango seeds. Which one will many, give you more? Many, many different mango seeds. Ah, so now in your imagination, when you're using a lot of adjectives, my dear sister, you are a warrior who's planting multiple seeds to get multiple success and that success cannot be common because the seed itself is uncommon. The seed itself is supernatural. And that is why what the doctors gave you the report was mm. through natural facts that they found. Yes. But now what you found from a person who is not even a doctor, you found him giving you another knowledge, which is mm. also going to bring healing. I'm not saying the yes. doctors will not bring healing. They'll put some chemicals, they'll use some uh, tools and try to mm. rectify the problem. But every time they touch the original combination that God has mm -hmm. created, a repairing is always a repair. What do you say? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but if you use the divine doctor to do mm. a divine repairing, there'll be no stitch marks, there'll be no cuts, there'll be no chemicals. It will be the word of God that is bringing the yes. divine healing. And that's why yes. the success will be uncommon. Yes, Baba. You also yes, told us Baba. now in front of everybody that you argued mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit. Yes. So is the Holy Spirit going to bring cure or is the Holy Spirit going to create more problem for you? He is bringing the cure. So he is bringing the cure in what? He is bringing the cure yes. wherever there is disorder. Yes. So according to the doctor's report, were there disorder? Yes. Yes. Now what was the advantage for you? They diagnosed and told you these are the places where there is disorder. Now mm -hmm. what did you do? You said, Holy Spirit, you are the cure of all disorder. So now I'm going to take instruction from you and focus on these disorders that need to be rectified. Right. So what they found was a problem is where you began to work in those areas and highlighted them and focused on destroying those disorders using the guidance of the Holy Spirit, following his instruction. And now when you saw those disorders completely terminated. Now you're saying, I don't need to go to the doctor anymore because I can see the facts have changed. What they said was a problem. The Holy Spirit destroyed the problem. And now they're saying your son is the best in the class. Yes. Yes, brother. What and is one was, yeah, Absolutely. The next, the, the, the day when I was having that episode that that whole torment of that fear and whatever I woke up with so much of fear and uh, you know thing in my heart and then I when I asked the Holy Spirit you know just please help me like help me and he said 
you know he brought that scripture to my mind lean not on your own understanding you know trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and uh, you know fear is torment and 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 only god's love can cast out fear so the, he he kept bringing to me verses from the bible and then when i asked jesus i asked him i said father what do i do what do i do he said only believe and you will see the glory of god you know that's the only thing we need to do only believe i don't need to do anything else i don't it's, no, no, no. I just, how did you get, how did you get connected to uh, uh, brother amal or jclm uh my uh, i have my friend you know sister mal and i think you will know her so mm. she she was talking to to us uh, i mean i actually invited her over to do it uh, for dinner to my house and then we got to talking and we were only talking about god the whole evening and then there was so much of you know like change in her and that i said okay can you please forward me those videos and i would also like to you know say those things and uh, oh no 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 uh, what did you say you saw so much of change in her was it the like change in her, her you saw or the words that she was speaking the words that she was speaking and 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 you saw what she was speaking was backed up with the change in her yes so that's when you got interested in knowing if she can get so much of change how did you get this change yes okay then and uh, because you earlier, why, did you, why did you call her uh, because we used to work together uh, in our previously and then we just thought of meeting up so called her over home after how dinner. many years after a one one and a half year i think so do you one think year. it's a coincidence or god's incidence sorry brother my questions are very very sharp okay please is it no no i didn't i i put it here uh, or is it god's incidents definitely god's incidents now before god's incidents can happen were you pre- mm-hmm. asking god for a solution yes what were you praying i was just praying father like just show me what to do why why you know why are things like this so just show me what i need to do please you know show me a way And so did you ever teach. think your 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 colleague whom with you are working with would change the whole future of your child never now is she a doctor no it can be a least expected person whom god can yes. use to change the future of your husband your your life yes. your marriage your child everything yes and i was now, also you were working in a company you are working in a company on which which field uh we were working for a supply chain supply chain now in that supply mm-hmm. chain is anything connected with god no so you got a solution from the least expected place yes from a least expected person yes and that is how god works yes brother that person <laughs> in that workplace was an uncommon seed that god had kept over there for you to get connected because she would direct you to a link and when you got in touch with that link it would open a world which you had never need known before yes. do you know how many people's uncommon seed we are okay let me put it this way mm-hmm. did you ever think the man who could turn around everything would be a man in ireland no do you think a man would be sharing with you agape love would be a man who doesn't even know which country he belongs to now because he is going <laughs> on move from country to country if somebody says from where have you come even i will begin to wonder from which country am i coming from never imagined brother i did not know what agape love was so has this uncommon seed mm-hmm. challenge you to plant an uncommon faith 
because when yes. you said you were going through the battle there another video came up and said don't fight thoughts with thoughts but fight with the word of god and you went on for half an hour and you saw the first victory oh this is so uncommon i never knew this so every time you are going to the youtube and picking up the teachings as kiyomi was saying today even that 10 minutes of teaching that you hear and you remove what is the thing that you have learned and begin to teach and begin to learn begin to apply you will have results yes so you can write down these four points that we learned and i'm not yet finished i've got more to ask you or are you tired okay. no i'm not okay every moment every moment contains a different reward from god every moment contains a different reward from god okay requiring requiring the discerning requiring the discerning of it and that's what has happened in this 11 days even though you did not understand in the beginning might be went through an argument with the holy ghost but he did not leave you he is still with you he still loves you but you began to discern it's no point going against the holy spirit it's good to be submissive to the holy spirit whatever he says and just follow him right yes sir yes second point the mentality of a warrior the mentality of a warrior is the seed is the seed for uncommon success so you have to change your mentality you have to unlearn all that you had learned yes and like a warrior you have to access now faith no more facts no more emotions no more philosophies simple stick to the word and that mindset of yours is a seed for uncommon success third the holy spirit is the only cure the holy spirit is the only cure for disorder the holy spirit is the only cure for disorder because there was a disorder you wanted a solution holy spirit said go and ask for sorry but how can i say sorry when i am not the one who made the mistake and the holy spirit said just go and say it okay but i don't feel like but i'll say it for you and even though you did not feel like you went and said but what happened after 10 minutes was mind blowing that seed that you planted in obedience to the holy spirit destroyed the disorder and brought things into order so can the holy spirit bring things into order without you cooperating no so did you have to submit yes i had to submit even though even though you were not wrong yes is it is it easy when you are unjustly treated it's not the easiest no but when you planted the seed did you get the harvest yes now when you know the system works this way will you repeat yes. it again or will you say no yes. one time i did is enough no no i will repeat it i want so to repeat it, it more is it to repeat what you are learning yes so can you make it your lifestyle yes so once it becomes a habit and once it becomes a lifestyle now your endurance your patience your perseverance has it grown much more than before yes brother so have you become a now a matured giant christian i don't know Hmm? are you yes, becoming one? yeah i'm becoming yes so so did you ever know 
there's a such a big potential tank that was inside which you had never known before all these years now yeah. you began to tap into that potential which is inside you now everything is what kingdom priority yeah previously was what kimberly priority yes now it is what kingdom priority so when kimberly is opening her mouth and saying i want this what is the spirit of kimberly saying kimberly shut up you are not going to get it yes lord tell me what do you want me to do yes. isn't that happening yes it is okay praise god now let's go further with all these things happening did amal say to you that confessing the word of god is very important yes why because our words have power to create our words have power okay and uh, so what so if you had to do everything let's say what you have to, what if you had to do everything but you never opened your mouth you never Not opened your mouth spoke anything but you were practicing mm -hmm. else now my question is the things that were in disorder in your son mm. would it come to order i don't think so why do you say that because uh, for the first day i was just to saying the scriptures out of them was just saying it out like you know as a like a task like just saying it out but then the more i kept saying it that first day there's like you know i uh, i could sense that there is some there is something in this thing that i kept saying it and i and the imaginations automatically started coming to me and i said yes the lord has given elijah the tongue of a teacher yes he knows how to sustain the weary with the word you know and you keep speaking that the more you keep hearing your own voice speaking that out there is that authority that you have been given that that assurance that the words you speak are backed up by somebody who never goes back on his word and then uh, that day when i was listening to that uh, teaching on prayer uh, that sister she said god honors his word above his name when i heard that i said yes that means this word is so powerful that god has put in it has put it above his name i didn't know that before and that means this is very serious i have to speak it out i have to say it out so now whenever i even get up from my desk to go get a bottle of water i speak it out i speak it out I, you know in whatever i'm doing i go and water my plants i speak it out you know i speak life over my son when i see him doing something wrong i say thank you god he is doing the right thing in the name of jesus christ you know if i feel uh, some uh, if i feel something is wrong i said you know the like yeah, the other day i was feeling some pain in my knee i said you know what do you know the name of jesus christ yes you do know the name of jesus christ i'm using that name and i'm using the authority in that name now you get out from here you know the, when you keep i feel that when you keep speaking it out speaking it out there is that kind of boldness that comes that yes this promise belongs to me this is my promise which my god has given me and and then that confidence comes automatically that you keep on saying it but if i just remember keep it in my mind and i don't say it out my thoughts can drift you know thoughts are constantly coming to us and my thoughts can drift and i may think of something else or you know i will lose the words or whatever but when i say it out there is something else there is a power behind it and things so change right so right down yes. my words my words are the first steps my word my words are the first step yeah. my words are the first step in first moving step. in moving okay. disorder towards order so what do you think about that i agree hmm i agree to that brother so is the root the root by which you could grow in your imagination the root through by which you could discern 
the difference, the route where your mindset began to change, the route where you began to submit to God's Holy Spirit is the moment when you first started exercising your mouth to speak God's word. Yes. Yes, it so is. You were speaking God's word in the midst of all the facts that you mm -hmm. had all around. You were actually planting not the fact seed, but the faith seed. And that faith seed was an extremely uncommon seed. And that is what was required yes. mixed up with your uncommon faith. Yes, Father. So uncommon word, as you began to say, you said, it changed my imagination, it changed my thinking, it changed my believing, and now I begin to become more and more confident because now, as I was speaking, my confidence grew and my believing became extremely strong. Is that right? Yes, yes, that's right. And that was the seed that you planted to get an uncommon harvest. So there were two things that came from your side is take the written word, mm -hmm. which is an uncommon seed, speak it out of your mouth so many times that it produces uncommon faith. And now with these two things together, it brought in the harvest. Now, in all these 11 years, uh, in all these 11 days, was there something very, very important that you had to do was correction? Um, I didn't understand. Brother. See, on one side, you had your own teachings for so many years. From yes. 2013, God had touched you. You would have heard so many sermons, so many preachings, so many things. Yes. Correct? Yes. Now, the preaching would have been right, but your interpretation mm -hmm. would have been wrong. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Or you wouldn't have been practicing. But now yeah. when you kept listening and when Amal gave you some instructions, was he demanding correction from your side? Yes. Yes. What is the first correction he asked you? First thing he told me to do was to bless those who have hurt me and to Which pray for true. those who hurt me. So there were people who hurt you? Yes. And you had those hurts inside of you? Yes. And you did not know how to get rid of them? I did not know. So he taught you how to get rid of them? Yes. Because I kept asking God forgiveness, forgiveness, and then I still I was angry with them and still I was having bitterness in my heart. Um, so when he began I, to teach you the mm -hmm, system mm -hmm. and you said, okay, I'll follow the system. Now, yes. did you ask him whether he's got a counselor degree? No. Then how come you went to the top most psychiatrist, top most psych psychologist, top most this, top most that? Then how come you did not ask Amal anything? Um, because the first thing he told me was, you know, you, uh, the first thing he told me was the Holy Spirit wants you to know that he is with you. You know, you think that he is with you, you know, he is with you, but you don't feel that he is with you, but he wants you to know that the whole, that he is with you always. And that really, um, that was something very strong when he said that. And that so you did not have to look at his background. Huh? Yes, sorry, brother. You did not have to look at his, you know. Uh, no, what you I see? didn't. CV, resume, what, what do you call that? You see, you know, people's background. Resume. What is he? Credentials. Thank you, brother Hector. <laughs> you heard what he said? Yeah, credentials. Credential. Yeah. So how come you did not check on him? Because that's the first thing he told me. And the second thing he told me, uh, you know, did do you have any pain in your body? And I said, yes. Um, you know, I, I had this pain in my, uh, you know, 
for the last three years in my legs and my hips i had this pain and the doctors have told me that you know you just have to be careful to walk you cannot do this you cannot carry your son and you cannot uh, you know carry weights you can't walk for too long because of pain the stiffness and all that was there and he asked me that correctly and i said yes i do brother and he said uh, immediately uh, do you have you know people who have hurt you have there been any people who hurt you in your past and i said yes and uh, you know i just broke down crying and uh, because i started remembering everything and then he told me to ask jesus to bless them and thank jesus for blessing them and he made me do it while i was talking to him on the phone so as i did that i just uh, you know felt a difference in my body um i i i that that's what you know the first thing is that he told me the holy spirit wants to be wants me to know that he's with me the second thing is he correctly told me that you know there was hurt in your past and you need to forgive and the moment i started saying thank you jesus for blessing these people thank you jesus for blessing all those names i had to say i could feel god's love coming into my heart and just the pain started it reduced so much now and i do that every day he told me to do that every day and i can walk long distances without getting you know the pain that i used to get before so and that changed my heart that i have to first change myself and then only i can start affecting changes around me i said i said that little pain is still there oh uh, yeah it is it is there okay do you want it to go right now yes or do you want a little to keep no no i don't want anything okay close your eyes okay and see this lord jesus lord jesus in mark 5 in mark 5 there is a woman with the issue of blood as a woman with the issue of blood who touched your garment who touched your garment and immediately she felt she was healed and immediately she was healed she felt she was healed she felt she was healed and then she wanted to disappear and then she wanted to disappear but lord jesus you touched around and said who touched me Lord Jesus you turned around and said who touched me and the disciples asked you everybody is touching you and the disciples asked you that everyone is touching you and you said no 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 the one who touched me my power is gone out of me and you said no the one who touched me the power has gone out of me and the woman with fear and trembling came to you and told her testimony and the woman with fear of tr- fear and trembling came to you and told you her testimony and as she said a testimony and as she said that testimony when she finished when she finished lord jesus you said to that lady lord jesus you said to that lady daughter daughter your faith your faith has made you whole has made you whole that means that means when she touched your garment when she touched your garment she got only bodily healed she only she got only bodily healed but when she shared a testimony but when she shared her testimony lord jesus you said lord jesus you said your faith has made you whole your faith has made you whole you never said your faith has made has got you healed you never said your faith has got you healed that means that means she not only got healed in her body she not only got healed in her body she got healed in her in her finances she got healed in her finances in relationship in relationship body yes but in every area of her life in every area of her life so in the same way the same way i i am sharing my testimony i am sharing my testimony and 
I want to declare. And I want to declare. I am also the daughter of Jesus. I am also the daughter of Jesus. If it happened for her. If it happened for her. There is no partiality in your kingdom. There is just no partiality in your kingdom. It happens for me right now in Jesus' name. It happens for me right now in Jesus' name. I'm not only healed in my body. I'm not only healed in my body. In my marriage, in my relationship. My marriage, in my relationship. In my finances. In my finances. In my attitudes. In my attitude. In every area of my life. In every area of my life. Thank you, Lord. I receive the whole package. Thank you, Lord. I receive the whole package. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, now lift your leg and march and do whatever you could not do before. There's not a trace of pain. It's all gone. Yeah, I can feel the difference. No, but is it there? Uh, there's a little bit of stiffness, but... A little bit of what? Stiffness. Okay, just march and say, thank you, Jesus, I am made whole. Okay. And keep marching. Keep doing the thing that you could not do and keep saying, thank you, Jesus, I am made whole. I can't hear you. Because I'm running from. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm made whole. Thank you, Jesus. I'm made whole. Thank you, Jesus. I'm made whole. I'm made whole. Thank you, Jesus. I am made whole. I am made whole. Thank you, Lord Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am made whole. Yeah, now? Yeah, the brother, stiffness. Sorry? It's not, it's hardly there. Like I can hardly. Be. No, no, keep saying till, till I don't, I don't accept hardly there. The word of okay. God says the woman was made whole. That's all I know. So I'm not going to agree with whatever you say. If the okay. Bible said it was partly healed, I would have said, you'll get your partly healed. The Bible says, Jesus said, you're made whole completely. Yeah. Don't stop till you get your 100%. It's your birthright. Don't you leave your a little bit inside. That little bit inside is a thief. Don't you ent allow him to enter in. Yes, brother. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It's glory time, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you. Thank you. Where are you? I'm here, brother. Yeah, tell me. Yes, I'm hear. walking. Hello? I can't hear you telling, thank you, Jesus, I made whole. Yes, brother. <laughs> because I was walking around the, the sitting room. Okay, you were back. walking all around. Very good. So what did you find? Yes. I could, uh, I found that, you know, there is a, like, my legs are not stiff anymore. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, and so I'm please walking down. around like I'm walking. So please write on yes, this point. My legs are not stiff anymore. Why? Write on the wisdom key. 
discerning the difference discerning the difference in moments discerning the difference in moments okay is my responsibility okay yes so when you took something from the bible what that woman received you said i also received was she sharing a testimony yes yes but the difference yes. between her testimony and your testimony is she could be stoned to death in your testimony nobody is going to stone you to death yeah that's why she was filled with fear okay so when i told yes, you mm-hmm. to say these words were you willing or did i force you no i was willing because i want sometimes, to be made whole sometimes some people are not willing because they yeah. have, they take advantage of it yeah do you know what advantage they take no no brother they make their husband massage their legs every day so when the husband said no no you must be healthy he saying no i really got pain now massage my leg yeah so sometimes some people do that i don't know whether you were doing that no 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 way brother i was huh? healed uh, in 2013 um, you know i i i couldn't i was healed of tb and i was healed of pleurisy in my lung i couldn't breathe i couldn't uh, you know the medicines were not working anymore um and i was suffering for like 2 years and then i could not breathe at all they told me that size of my lung had shrunk uh and it will be a lifelong like a scar on my lung and you know in dubai when you come you do your medicals and if they see that scar on your lung even though you don't have tb they will deport you yes right? so so uh, that time when i didn't i didn't have a job i didn't have anything you know and i had this issue where i was so sick um i was i was 20 uh, i think 25 or some 25 years old and i i was 40 kilos i was so sick and then i cried out to jesus and i said lord if you know you know i just cried out to him and then he that's when he came to me and he just said it's done when i said by your stripes i'm healed lord he said it's done and i knew it was done and the next day i had my report i had to take a x ray and the previous x ray that i had taken they had showed us there was no decline in my lung was filled with fluid so it was only 20% declined after 3 months but the next day when i went there was no fluid and my lung was back to normal size <laughs> and the doctor told me i uh, he says well your prayers must have been answered because i cannot explain this and he said uh, you have a small scar on your lung but i didn't know anything that time so i just kept asking jesus please help me you know please i'd want to go back to dubai and start my life and then when i came back to dubai i got a job within a, within one month okay and then i did the medicals and on the day of the medicals also i was really worried like then i said no jesus you brought me so far you know you're not going to let me go and the medicals was clear it said you know and i've been in dubai ever since that day <laughs> so you can write down for all that you told me my reaction decide what happens next my reaction decide yes. what happens next what happens next yes yes sir over to my team members now i am handing you over to my team members and they will be very very uh, i don't know what hello yes brother i'm here i'm here brother all excited i've finished my part now they are it's their part 
Okay. Are you okay or you are tired? No, no, I am not tired. Are you okay, Vidhi? Okay. Yes, yes, I am. I am okay. 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 Sister, she just she. Sorry, Sister Kimberly. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, brother. Today is the day the Lord has made in your life. You have got yes. a new ministry. Yes. Did are you among other mothers? Amen. You know, every incident in our lives is the beginning of a process mm -hmm. to a God-given finished product. Yes. And I just want to say, Hosea 4, 6 has come alive and been made flesh in your life. Mm -hmm. Because you're reading it with a new understanding. My daughter Kimberly is loved for her knowledge in my word. Because she has not rejected me, I will never reject her. Oh, amen. She shall be a priestess to me. Seeing mm -hmm. she has not forgotten my word or my law, I will also never, ever forget her children and her children's yes. children. Congratulations. You. you have a Thank new so brand ministry in your life. So many Thank other you. mothers are going to be touched by you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your glory that is here right now, Lord. Thank you for your glory. Uh, thank you for your glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, brother Amul. Go and embrace your son, my dear sister. He has brought you to this new phase in your life. Yes. Yes, brother. Embrace your husband. Yes, brother. This is the power of family. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Kimmy has uh, run the marathon today and she's ready to keep going. She's ready to keep running. Christina. Yes, praise God. Praise God. That's basically a powerful testimony, Kimberly. And we have all heard, apart from everybody else, we have all heard it and we have all learned so much from this powerful anointed testimony. Thank you, Jesus. And mm -hmm. as Brother Hector, yes, rightly said, that hug, hug your son and your husband because... This is truly a new life. Yes. You know, you are born again. You said you were touched in 2013. 
mm-hmm. felt the love of God. But yes. you still, yes, but you still did not have the knowledge of the truth that you have today. Yes. Correct? Correct, yes. Yeah, praise God. And Brother Johnson asked you all, put you through the entire process, which is really a teaching that we've got from your testimony. So many truths have been revealed and uh, come to light with this testimony of yours. And truly, uh, thank you, Jesus, that whoever is going to the similar situation, and many are going, many are going through the same situation for the benefit of those who don't understand the abbreviation of ADHD, would you be able to explain that? So we were told uh, an ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And uh, we were told that, you know, he will not be able to uh, interact with others. He will not be able to learn or listen to instructions or pay attention or have focus um, and just be hyperactive about everything. Uh, So that was basically it in a nutshell and that he would need uh, therapy like occupational therapy and, you know, things like that. So So later on in life, he may need medication is what we were told by the psychiatrist. Correct. So basically, this is a brain related to a brain, a mental disorder. Yeah. yeah. And she said it was, a, it was a neurological disorder. A neurological. But then again, it is, a men, it is related to the mental disabilities, correct? It affects yes. the mental. Yeah. Yes. Praise God. Yes. So just for the benefit of those who don't, wouldn't know what HDHD was. Yeah. And... Once you, you well, basically got to know about this, it was like a nightmare. Yes. Praise God. And it was, yeah, because it yeah. was not something that we expected. But I'll, uh, I wouldn't say it with my mouth. I would not say those words that my son had this um, because he doesn't. And uh, that's not what God has given us. So, and this was without you being in the in the knowledge of the truth. You were not accepting it. No, I was. A, I was. Uh, see, I knew. I I kept listening to a lot of sermons. I kept. I I am. I go to church and I listen to a lot of things. I mean, I listen to a lot of sermons. So I knew I'm not supposed to say the negative thing. I'm not supposed to speak the facts. I knew I'm supposed to agree with the word of God. I knew uh, those things. So I said to myself that whatever they say, I will not agree on that. I'm going to agree with the word of God. Um, so just, for, just... The benefit, correct. So just mm-hmm. for the benefit of, uh, to use at the time frame that from the di- diagnosis till mm-hmm. you encountered with Merlin, well, mm-hmm. when did this happen? This happened sometime in 2020, correct? No, mm-hmm. the diagnosis was this year in uh, beginning of April. Oh, April. I met Merlin before that, like I think a month before that is when she came home and I was. Okay. Uh, so you did have the knowledge then, you did have, that's why you were not accepting it because she yes. came one month prior to that. So you had already started looking at the teachings. No, and I also, like I said, I was healed in 2013. So I knew that God was not the one who did this. And I knew that it, it is subject to change. It has to change. I, I knew yes. that I had hope. I knew that I had hope in Jesus. So I just would not accept it. Correct. But yet, from uh, the diagnosis, you went through the process of April, May. It was not, mm-hmm. you didn't have the confidence as much as you had mm-hmm. it, uh, you know, 11 days prior to what has happened today. Correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Once because you after you spoke with yeah, once you got the knowledge, true knowledge mm-hmm. of the truth, uh, Sister mm-hmm. Kimberly, after you spoke to Brother Amal, mm-hmm. that's when you started seeing manifestations. That's when you started yes. using the Bible principles 
firmly and because you were getting attacked by the devil and you mm-hmm. were encountering because you said it repeatedly that the mm-hmm. you you were fearful you were doubtful yes. you were like it was but if you did not get the knowledge from mm-hmm. brother amo yeah. it wouldn't have you wouldn't be standing here today correct testify no, i would not no yeah. i would not absolutely praise god thank you jesus so and as brother johnson dictated something here he said the last point was discerning the difference in moments is my responsibility so it all depended on the reaction the way you responded to things after you encountered with the truth yes yes so your responsibility for changing it is your responsibility it is your actions your res- your responses that changed things around you yes so once you changed your attitude you took that responsibility you started seeing change around how yes. would you explain so that confidence so when mm-hmm. i started seeing small changes like for instance uh, like i told you about the compassion thing and how my son started you know just out of the blue saying mommy you need water when you're coughing or something like that he was compassionate he understands the meaning of danger he tells oh. me buckle up when you get in the car because you have to be safe um, and another thing is you know he remembers things so well like he we went to india two years back and he remembers the struck the what is in my mom's house and where it's placed and the other day we were having a call with my mom and he tells my mom to go look for the dog and she says i don't know where he is so he says go by the, go go to your balcony and you know there's a glass table on your balcony grandma and dog is there so oh. she says how does he remember when he's not been here for two years and i said i don't i don't it has to be god and uh, you know got the mind of christ this, you are confessing he's, he's got the mind of christ correct he's got the mind of christ and just his his whole behavior he's 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 not acting like a like a younger kid now he's maturing like the way he's talking is maturing like he says mummy i want to sleep you know um you know i want to sleep right now please you know is he saying please and thank you and he says hi i'm fine and uh, another thing the teacher said is you you, you ask him his name he doesn't say his name but now he says his full name you know he says where he's from he says his mummy's in my name his dad's name everything praise god so, and that and you know um sister kimberly praise god for all that that it's all coming to pass as as the word of god says because the instructions mm-hmm. that were given to you you followed them do you do you believe that that the instructions yes. that you followed determines the future you would create for yourself yes yeah i believe that because i did not know what to do earlier and i was just like praying and hoping something's going to happen you know but now when i pray even though things don't look like it's changing i in my mind you know the holy spirit the holy spirit is so amazing we just ask him holy spirit what do i do that's all i ask him and he says he told me faith is the evidence of things not seen you know you want evidence the evidence is your faith not the facts around you so your faith has to be the evidence that yes i am going to see the result and i don't care how it looks like now but my god has said it and that's the end and that's that's the end of it correct so you are speaking just now your faith and that's what you eventually seen and that's why you're here to testify so you're no more in the seen you're all in the unseen you're in the supernatural correct yeah. yeah and what got you there into the supernatural like uh, uh, when the amal gave me the scriptures to read every day you know i kept reading on it meditating on it every day and there was one or two days that i thought oh should i really say this 10 times a day and then the holy spirit said just obey don't ask you know so i did it and i in fact did it more than 10 times a day and then i kept at it and i when i started seeing those little minor changes i that gave me the confidence that yes you know i have got my footing now i need to stay here i am not moving 
I have to keep it. I have to keep at it. Praise God. What do you all think about Kimberly? Kimberly. Wow. wow. Kimberly. It's a wow, 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 wow testimony. And we've learned so much from the way you have also uh, taken out every uh, point you've you know, put her on the um, on the seat. We've got so much of truths revealed, brother. Praise God! And yeah, she's on a she's on a fantastic journey now. Sometimes I become a little selfish, no? Why? Because I don't give you all a chance. <laughs> no, you did. <laughs> no, I mean, I I you have know, I have you know, it, it is like a temptation, you know. It's like a temptation. Yes. I want. I say, Lord, I am becoming selfish. So many times the thought comes, but yet I'm going on and on and on. I'm saying, Lord, then I'm saying, okay, enough. Now I won't. I'll give them a chance. I'll give them a chance. Sorry. No, but every time she said something, no, every time she said something, there was something that you uh, you came up with a wisdom key. You came up with another truth. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I've got like how many pages written on this testimony and all the teaching that we've got from it, brother, because we've got a full teaching out of it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And uh, it, it's very powerful. There's so much that we've learned from it. And the, the, the beautiful... Christina, the, the Melbourne Christina? She's there, yeah. Tina? Yes, oh, Tina. please. Yes, yes, yes. Bim, bim, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, yeah. Boom, boom. Wow, wow. Hallelujah. This is um, a dynamite uh, testimony indeed. So, um, so, so, so could I, could I, can I put you, can I put her in your, in your group for the helpline? Oh, yes, you can. Please. Thank you very much. You, you will take her under your, this thing, umbrella? No worries at all. Happy, happy, happy. I've okay, learned okay. so much from her. Okay. Come on. There, there she goes into your group. I'll talk to Jude tomorrow. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you Praise so much. Uh, and brother, okay. can I just... Um, can I just quickly, quickly, before I start work, tell you, thank you for teaching us the truth and, and giving us the understanding of the, um, uh, the lady with the issue of blood, the woman with the issue of blood. It was not... Yes. Right? She got healed, right? Right? Yes. She got not a, not she alone was she healed, right? she was made whole. Made whole, yeah. yes. When she shared her testimony. Exactly. Yes. And this is what, this is the wholeness and the completion and the peace that um, Kimberly was talking about when she started off her testimony. This is what she has received today. Not just healing, but every situation made whole. And, and she, she's a mother who is going to get now big, big, big ministry of different children from different parts of the world. Kimberly... You can yes, un 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 unmute yourself, Baba. Yes, brother. I did not ask you with, whether you would like to join the the Ministry of Helpline Warriors. I don't mind, brother. You got it's no mind. <laughs> Sorry. You no, got I no. Don't, uh... <laughs> I have the mind of Christ. <laughs> Not my <laughs> mind. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 brother, actually, I was, you know, asking God, what, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? Like, really, what, what do you want me to do? And um, this is, I, I, I would gladly accept. So, Krishna, the job is sanctioned. Thank you, thank you. Welcome aboard, Kimi. Love ya. Have you too? Only, only thing you know, this firefighter girl, no, she's a little wild. Okay, when she sees fire, she goes wild, boom, boom, bam, boom. <laughs> so little undiscipline is there, but you'll have to bear with her. <laughs> Praise God, Kimberly, she's the captain okay. of. You, so you'll have to bear with her. If she puts too much pressure, you can tell me. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. She, she has put in me a, um, a desire to give this. ADHD, a new name. Tell me. No longer it is called whatever the world calls it. It's now it is anointed divine 
holy and devoted children of the most high god amen say that again say that again anointed divine holy devoted children of the most high god wow amen thank you jesus praise god